manatule wo tofunga le a pe le five man like o lupe samba o se se ale wo fui fui fantasi le lo fama le ngal le yol tanto ta pa o sisi de se lanki fa ftai tai le tua mon ne ya venoa tai le tua le a fio mai tala mai ao le pa ia la si la si yol tanto wo tunu mo tanga ta tu mo tul pa fika and that's just my way of acknowledging each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Um, many of you have traveled from outside the city, but you've come together because there's something important that we acknowledge tonight. I want to tell you a story, but I firstly want to acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues who have joined with me here today, and they're all scattered all over the place. Um, I want to acknowledge them first and foremost because Parliament finishes today, so most of them are on their way home. But the leader of the opposition and my colleague David Bennett uh, took the time to be here and she did apologize before leaving. I'm glad that she left because I just wanted to greet you with Talofa. But <laughs> I'm going to ask my parliamentary colleagues if you could stand up because I know some of you are here but I'm not sure where you're sitting. Stand up, please, and show yourself to the rest of our communities who are here. So, turn around. On, on my right there is Teresa Ngobi, the MP for Otaki. In the back there on my left is Tangyu Tekerere, the MP for Palmerston North. And next to him is Barbara Edmonds, the MP for Mana. And these two young men here is Paul Ego, MP for Zongotai. And Le Fionga Yanai, Dr. Nehru Lambasa, the MP for the new seat of Takanini. Um, but sincerely, thank you. Uh, for being here because I know most of you, most MPs will have gone home to be with their families. Your Excellencies, good to see you. Thank you for your wonderful support as always. Uh, Reverend Joe Faftai Vinakavakalevu for your blessing. And I acknowledge also the various ministerial colleagues here, the agency I should say, La Ulu Makleo and I of um, Ministry for Pacific Peoples. And Jonathan Kings, uh, it's been a long time. I know that your father has passed away, and I keep meaning to give you a call to send you our love and, and support, but it's good to see that you're out and about. And Jonathan is head of the MFAT Pacific Division. I want to tell you a story and then end off here. And I promise not to be long, but I think the testimonies by Ainga uh, Lefili and Chanel moves me to sort of talk about where we've come from and, and what we're doing here and why these youth awards are important. In 2018, um, we released a report called the Pacific Aotearoa La Langafo Report. And that was a report that we were able to capture input from young people across New Zealand. And, and it captured the vision for what young people said to me is what they want to see in Aotearoa for all Pacific peoples. They see themselves as confident, thriving, passionate, flourishing, but they also wanted to see role models who look like them and talk like them, long names like them, all different shapes like them, um, at all levels of our decision-making structures. And, and there was a set of goals that they identified of how do we achieve that vision the goal of language and culture was important. The goal of economic prosperity. And they were saying they don't necessarily want to be working for other people. They want to be their own bosses. The goal of being healthy and resilient. And then the goal of young people. That particular goal was important because we could see where the population of Aotearoa was heading. This Pacific cohort, youngest, fastest, growing, they are multilingual, they are bilingual, they are multi-ethnic in terms of their parentage. And I could just see where 
the new New Zealand is going, these are people that I would often to try and describe the diversity by saying to them, they are generation 6Bs. These are people who are proudly brown, beautiful, brainy, bilingual, bicultural, and bold. It was just my way of trying to figure out the makeup and the diversity that I see coming through. And so, Ainga Lefili is right. There is no one voice for our Pacific youth. I'm constantly aware that although I'm, I lead our Pacific caucus, I'm not necessarily, I'm sort of the old school now. I used to look at these guys and thought they were old, but I'm feeling I'm the old school. <laughs> Sorry, Lea, <I> see. <laughs> um, because of that diversity. And so, it, in my mind's eye, these young people have a role to play in the future of Aotearoa New Zealand. But they, their interests are not confined to the borders of Aotearoa. Their interest expands to the Pacific region. Because, like Māori, if I'm Ngāpuhi, I go up north for tangi. If I'm Tainui, I go to Waikato for a funeral, or whatever it is. And for us, as Pacific, we go back to La Rotonga, Niwe, Tokelau, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, Papua New Guinea. And, and so I think when the Honourable Winston Peters was the Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, that Pacific reset was about re-looking at what is our relationship with the Pacific. And I think the Māori principle of whanaungatanga, that we are family, captures the feel, the mood, that despite the boundaries that states and sovereign states put up, we don't see boundaries when it comes to families. And so um, when we were getting around promoting the Pacific Reset, I was fortunate that I was asked um, by the Honourable Winston Peters with the support of the Prime Minister to attend a lot of the regional meetings in the Pacific. And one of the highlights of last year was attending the UN, um, the Climate Change Conference and being at the United Nations General Conference. I went there while the Prime Minister visited uh, Japan and on her way. My role there was to support the Pacific Island Forum while she did all the high-level meetings. I was asked to attend a meeting with President Trump, and I said, why me? Why couldn't it be somebody else? <laughs> but it was an experience. I came away from that visit, and Angana Fili talks about climate change, and her voice has been consistent in that. And what I saw was our young people's voices need to be at that level. Because I heard a young woman talk about climate change, but she referenced melting ice sheets and dying polar bears. And that's not us. <laughs> Our experience is the loss of homes, of lives, and what do we do when the land isn't there? And so we do need those voices. The other thing I came away thinking, those wealthy nations can't see us. When they look at the map, they see dots. And yet our voice is so important at that multilateral level. And so I, I've said to the ministry and anybody that will listen to me, we need to generate opportunities for young people to have that platform. But it's not just in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We need those platforms around the Pacific region because if our voices, our uniquely indigenous, Pacific indigenous voices aren't in this debate, in these discussions, then it'll be somebody else's voice. And as much as I love my American brothers and sisters, that's not my voice. And so I'm so glad to hear these two talk about their voices that are uniquely Aotearoa Pacifica. Because we need to talk about that, not talk about the history that belongs to somebody else's nation. So I, I'm going to acknowledge that. Acknowledge also the recipients that you are charged with responsibility in receiving these awards. Um, 
I often hear young people, the pathway to leadership is through service. I understand that. I get that. That's been ingrained in me from day one. But I've since learned it's not, it's not necessarily the pursuit of precision. It's about preparing yourself. It's about being mindful of people around us. And I suppose to sum it all up, the saying, Leasi, from the mountains flow the blessing up to the villages. You are the young mountains. These are the older mountains, and you are the younger mountains. Older or younger, high or lower, you are nevertheless mountains. Mountains protect the villages by blocking off the wild elements. Mountains nurture the village by ensuring that the water that flows from that mountain is crystal clear and clean. But if the waters are dirty and murky, the villagers will suffer. And so I charge you with that, with that responsibility. And I recognize and really appreciate um, the members of the board of uh, Pacific Corporation Foundation for, for this inaugural Youth Awards. Fantastic, I believe. And I want to also convey to you um, the love and support of Nanaya Mahuta, who could not be here with you, but she and I um, are working together to try and provide a perspective that's uniquely ours, not only in Aotearoa, New Zealand, but across the Pacific region. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia ora tātou katoa, whāwhtai, soifua, manuia.